Open those eyes. Get the big stretching. Ooh, that felt good. Get those sleep out of your eyes, guys, because Man Hour NFL Talk is here. Live, raw, uncut sports talk. Every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. East Coast time. We got to talk about some big roster moves happening across the NFL. Cutting down from 93 to 53. You got to do what you got to do. But as always, we start with the best thing of the day, and that is... And now, Mike's Thoughts. As the NFL preseason comes to a close, ladies and gentlemen, we have to discuss things that have been kind of like WTF, Nate. We have to talk about things that are kind of like, like, why do these things keep happening over and over and over again? The point of the matter is, First of all, we are glad that everybody is okay. We are glad that people are always coming out of the NFL games healthy. Well, not like season-ending, career-ending injuries, right? But the NFL has to stop this. The NFL needs to put on their big boy pants and understand that Injuries happen. They need to understand that sometimes things do not go perfectly. Now, ever since the DeMar Hamlin thing, I understand that everybody is on kind of like pins and needles. Everybody's kind of like, oh, we need to definitely need to simmer down now. So what I am referring to, what I've been referencing is the simple fact that the NFL has kept at least four preseason games off the top off the top of my head because of injuries. Because players have been carted off the field for said, said injuries. Yes, I understand injuries suck. Yes, I understand that being carted off the field kind of puts a damper in the game. Yes, I understand it is just preseason. But understand this. This season, let's flash back to what? August 1st or whatever it was. Hall of Fame game. Zach Thomas sitting there on the interview booth interviewing with, I don't even re- remember who the commentators were, but he said if it wasn't for a fourth quarter preseason game, he would not even be on an NFL roster. He would not even be in the NFL Hall of Fame if it wasn't for a fourth quarter preseason game. And what does the NFL do this year? They canceled at least three or four preseason games because of people getting injured. You are cutting my job interview short. You are cutting a possibly a potential Hall of Fame career. You are doing a lot of things that I am just... Why? Why are you doing this? I understand. I understand the DeMar Hamlin thing is still fresh in our wounds, right? The scar hasn't even healed yet. I get it. But you have to understand... I am putting my life out there each and every day. I am trying to make an NFL roster. I am trying to make life-changing money for my family. And by you, as in the NFL, cutting that short, cutting my opportunity short, cutting the fact that I that I, I could make a huge play and that could wow Robert Sala, that could put me on a roster and that could catapult me to special teams captain, catapult me to a defensive linebacker. Like, NFL, please. Please stop canceling these games. Please stop postponing these games. Injuries happen. People get carted off the field. It happens. We all understand. But at the bottom of the day, we are fighting for our livelihoods. We are fighting for that payday. We are fighting for that contract. And to say that one person's injury is better than me finishing the job interview. Why? Why is that person better than me? Why is that person better than 87 other people on the other team? 170-some players on the field. 
Why is that? I I get it. Demar Hamlin. We we all understand. It's preseason. We all understand. But those guys out there getting injured are literally putting their lives on the line to try to make a roster. Understand that. Please understand that. Because at the end of the day, I I didn't make the roster because you canceled the game. I didn't make the roster because you canceled the game. Hold that on your conscious. Cue that intro. Time, no. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the Dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host? Mike, Buck, and Cone. You know they come to the sports talk than what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talking about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA. Hey, we the big spark. No fourth and inches won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live. Live all three. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckcaster here with the Man Hour. Sure to head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise sales course at the blog section as well. And we are currently working on the app. I'm hoping to get it done by week one. I'm I'm no coder by any means, so I'm going to have to Google it and, you know, do my X's and O's a little bit. And uh, there, there's going to be a lot of outreaching to try to get this thing done. But I am putting everything that I can into getting it done by week one. And if not, we will definitely try to get it by week two. I, I just, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but we will definitely figure it out moving forward. But guys, welcome to the Man Hour. This is Strictly NFL Talk every Monday through Friday. 10 a.m. East Coast time. And if you guys haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Whatever platform you are listening to us on and share this. Share this with a couple friends as well because sharing is caring. Also, guys, we do have a members-only tab over at YouTube.com. Since Facebook wants to, uh, you know, kind of play hardball over here and demonetize our page, we are encouraging people to go back over to YouTube. So, uh... We aren't going to do a hard push right now. We still got some things in the. We're we're trying to figure a few things out, out 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 here. But we will definitely figure it out. It is way or no way here Monday, guys. It is simple. We give you a, a simple bit of questions. It's either a way or it's a no way. I have put some polls out there as well to to uh to try to understand what you guys are thinking here. Like without commenting, a simple click, a simple yes, a, a simple no. It is that freaking easy. But we are going to talk about the Houston, Texas quarterback situation. CJ Stroud has officially been named QB1. Did they make the right choice? Ryan Jensen is out. But that is the Bucks center. He may not even play a snap ever again in the NFL. Wow. Trey Lance sent to Dallas. Will Trey Lance start over Dak? Shaquan Barkley wants to be a giant for life. He says, ah, giant for life, baby. Let's go. Does that hurt him? Does him being honest hurt him in the end of the day? Jimmy Graham glimpses of 2013. What? Is my man back? Of course, we got a little bit of stock up, stock, stock down talk about the that's right put some respect on their name the denver broncos with the beat down of the rams 41-0 but guys we will get into all that and much much more but first first things first we got to get into a little bit of the new news with the lead block here so guys there's going to be a lot of nfl transactions over the next couple days as the rosters gets cut down from 96 to 93 down to 53 man roster. I believe it has to be uh, finalized by Wednesday. So there's going to be a lot of movement happening. So uh, unfortunately, myself and Hoffy cannot keep up with all the trans tran- transactions. So I encourage you to go to NFL.com and check out all the transactions if you want to see what your team is doing there. But today with the lead block, P.J. Walker has officially been cut by the, I'm sorry, 
uh, this this is still kind of mind-boggling to to me here but pj walker has officially been cut by the chicago bears he was eventually he was initially brought in to be quarterback two and now nathan peterman's time in chicago is back chicago bears fans how do you feel about this pj walker out nathan peterman in qb2 oh man oh man oh man slow it down baby and despite of all the running back situations happening in Indianapolis, the Indianapolis Colts have decided to release Kenyon Drake. So D- Kenyon Drake is out. Uh, they have obviously the Jonathan Taylor issue that is happening. No contract has been settled there. He, he is demanding a trade, yada, yada, yada. The Miami Dolphins have reached out. And the backup is still out for another five weeks with the broken arm. So we'll see if Hall can, or Hull, H-U-L-L, can uh, work the load there in Indianapolis. We'll see. New York football giants have released James Robertson. James Robertson is out. He said, Shaquan Barkley is our guy. We don't need a one-two punch. Guys, let's think about James Robertson. He's entering in his fifth year in the league. He spent the first three seasons in Jacksonville. Uh, he, he came in a year before Travis Etienne. Etienne missed his first year. And then a couple years ago, we were talking about a nice little one-two punch. Like, oh, they're going to bing, bing, bada, boom, bada, bing. It is going to be awesome. But the Jaguars like, ah, see you later, alligator. Traded him to New York when uh, uh, Brees Hall went down. And now he has officially been cut by the New York Giants. So it is what it is at the end of the day. Miami Dolphins and defensive tackle Christian Wilkinson was unable to agree to turn. So he'll be playing on the fifth year option, which is valued about $10.8 million. So, in despite of not giving their defensive tackle a long-term deal, they're saying, hey, let's give our offensive tackle, Zach Seiler, a three-year $308 million. Okay, that makes sense. And Ian Book, Beastie Combs man himself, has officially been released by the Philadelphia Eagles. Ian Book had a, I thought he had a chance to do some things in New Orleans, but they're like, let's bring in Derek Carr, Ian Book, you're out, uh, go, to, go to your second second year somewhere else, uh, just, we are not satisfied with you, my man, I just, get out of town, we do. Ian Book, Beastie Combs, figure out your Notre Dame or Irish quarterback situation there, because we always talk about Ohio State being like quarterback failure in the NFL. Maybe it's time we start talking about the Notre Dame Irish. Fighting Irish, have they ever had a successful quarterback in the in the NFL? I don't know. We can't be calling people out like that if uh, there's other other uh, other teams out there, guys. But that is that is the lead block for today. Like I said, there's there's going to be a lot of NFL transaction guys over the next couple days, and I encourage you to go over to NFL.com or turn on the NFL Network here after this show is over, obviously, to see what your team is doing because there's going to be a lot of transactions. Now, here on Facebook.com forward slash Man Hour, we will be covering some of the major transactions, you know, like DTR being named. It says the number two receiver for the Cleveland Browns and that kind of thing. Tanner McKee possibly being named number two for the Eagles, but a lot of the lower trans the lower trans tran- transactions, unfortunately, we just don't have the manpower to really, you know, provide that. It's a one man show here, and I try, I try, try my best to keep up, but sometimes it is what it is. But guys, it is way or no way Monday here, and way or no way is fairly simple. We've been sprinkling little things out there on the old interwebs, and we've been going back and forth, and we've been saying, how do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about that? And we finally give it to you straight. I tell you if it's a way or it's a no way, if it's a good move or it's a bad move. So let's go ahead and head down south, head down to the greatest state in the world, and that is Texas. Houston Texans has officially named their starter C.J. Stroud for QB1 over Davis Mills. Didn't they already do this back in, I don't know, when they drafted him number two overall? Like, the, so the question is, way or no way did the Houston Texans make a good choice? 
People in the chat here say at 75%, yes, the Houston Texans did make a good choice by naming CJ Stroud QB1. So when we think about the Houston Texans here, we are thinking of a team the last three or four seasons that have kind of just been a dumpster fire. Let's just be honest. They give Deshaun Watson $100 million, and then like six months later, he's like, ah, no, 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 no touchy, right? And he moved on. Long story short, he moved on to Cleveland. Bill O'Brien was out. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is out. J.J. Watt was out, right? They were in a complete rebuild mode. Now, they finally got possibly one of the best young coaches out there. I love me some D'Amico Ryans. I think it was a great fit. They added a number two and number three overall pick to the roster on the offensive side and the defensive side of the ball. So I feel like the rate, the writing was was on the wall already for C.J. Stroud. Like he is going to be the guy. Yes, DeMarco Ryans was saying all the right things. Yes, he was saying, you know what? Everything is an open quarterback competition. Or, or every position is like open. No position is guaranteed. We get it. So way or no way did the Houston Texans make a good choice by naming C.J. Strauss their starting quarterback? Absolutely. Absolutely. You do not use a second overall pick on a quarterback if you do not expect him to play week one. You do not let him sit behind Davis Mills or whoever else is on that Houston Texans roster because that just gives you a bad president moving forward as a head coach in D'Amico Ryans. As he said that every spot is open, right? So why is the best player sitting on the bench? I do like me some Davis Mills. I think Davis Mills is a very valuable service backup quarterback in the NFL. Keyword there is backup. C.J. Stroud is the guy. C.J. Stroud will be the man moving forward. And C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans are going to make some noise. C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans are going to make some noise, guys. They're going to shock some people. Now, playoff run? No. Division championship? No, but three wins again, two wins again, uh, no. They are going to make some noise. So, yes, the Houston Texans did make a correct choice with the uh, name in CJ Stroud, QB number one. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They named Baker Mayfield QB one just the other day, right? And I was all aboard. I was... Choo-choo, jump on that Tampa Bay Buccaneers bandwagon, right? But in the last 48 to 72 hours, some things have transpired in Tampa Bay that makes me want to renege everything that I just said. That is why we are redoing our picks throughout this week here. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers center, Ryan Jensen, has been placed on season-ending IR with a botched knee surgery last season. And all reports, all indications are that he may never play another NFL snap again. So, guys, Ryan Jensen has kind of been that center stone, the heart and beat of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line the last several seasons. Him and Tom Brady had a chemistry happening right. Ryan Jensen was that nice, gritty I'm going to protect Tom Brady at like all costs and and Tom Brady encouraged it. Kept boosting the guy up, boosting the guy up. Last year, Ryan Jensen played, I think he missed all last season, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had the worst running game in the NFL. Going from top 10 to the worst because your center missing, uh, I'm no genius, but it's clearly that Ryan Jensen is kind of of that center stone, kind of of the leader, right? So, guys, way or no way, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers should go ahead and tank the 2023 season with this news that just came out. Now, I am a firm believer that there is clearly no tanking in the NFL. There are some teams that may not put out a best product week in and week out, but look at the Houston Texans last year, right? 
All they had to do was lose the final preseason or the final game of the season last year to the Indianapolis Colts to get the number one overall pick. And what happens? The players are like, hold my beer, coach. We're going to win one for the skipper. Screw this GM. Screw this owner, right? Yeah, so, obviously, there is no tanking. So, no way that the Buccaneers are going to, to tank. But let me reconfigure the question here. Have the Buccaneers become a front runner or, or are the Buccaneers no longer a front runner in the NFC North with this injury news? So when we look at this news, guys, Ryan Jensen is a huge loss. Baker Mayfield needs a solid running game to be successful. Kyle Trash needs a r- solid running game to be successful. Let's just be honest. Now, I do think that the Buccaneers have taken a step back without Ryan Jensen. They will take a few lumps on the chin moving forward. On the bright side, if there is a silver lining in all of this, right, Ryan Jensen hasn't played all preseason. So Baker Mayfield hasn't gotten used to a center. Baker Mayfield hasn't gotten used to his antics on the field, right? So this... That's the only silver lining in this whole thing. But yes, guys, no way. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are no longer the front runner in the NFC South. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are no longer a 10-11 win team without Ryan Jensen. The center is quickly becoming a very important position, right? You always have that one person that kind of like catapults that team, catapults that that uh that uh, position, Jason Kelsey, right? Nobody cared about center until Jason Kelsey kind of became like a celebrity, right? Until they started doing their podcast and their mama Kelsey was like was like on there. And, he, and uh, centers are quickly now becoming very, very important. We are seeing a lot more athletic centers out there. We are seeing the capabilities of what a center can actually do besides just snap, that snap the ball and a double team a guy. They're pulling, they're talking to chef, yada, yada, yada. But, yes, guys, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are no longer the front runners in the NFC South. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are probably going to have another losing season. And, unfortunately, it's all going to fall on the shoulders of Baker Mayfield, and I think that is a complete crap. Like, when you do that to Baker Mayfield, it is it is so much BS. But... It is what it is. We all understand. You guys are split 50-50 there in the chat. Should the Buccaneers tank in 2023? Yes and no. 50-50. 50-50. Let's move on, guys. The Dallas Cowboys kind of shocked me over this weekend. When uh, Trey Lance was officially named QB3, apparently the Cowboys are like, hey, Let's get us some Trey Lance. And there were other teams out there. The Minnesota Vikings have reportedly been on the phone with the 49ers. The Miami Dolphins were. Um, I believe the Giants were as well. There were teams that, that there, there was interest in Trey Lance. Ultimately, the Cowboys won the bidding war, I guess. The fourth round pick, I guess that was the best, the best that the, the 49ers could do for Trey Lance. But Jerry Jones says he sees an opportunity for Trey Lance to develop under Dak Prescott. So, 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 guys, way or no way does Trey Lance take Dak Prescott's job next season? So, first things first, guys, is Trey Lance will probably not be on the active roster for the Dallas Cowboys in the 2023 NFL season. He will probably be a practice squad quarterback. Now, if some miracle happens, right, he can jump up into that number three spot over Will Gear, which I thought Will Gear did pretty good last night versus the Raiders, but we digress from that. Trey Lance could be a QB3. Over QB2? QB No, probably not going to happen. So... Way or no way, will Trey Lance take over Dak Prescott's job eventually in Dallas? The answer to that question is no way. 
As Trey Lance, I think, has not gotten a fair shake in the NFL. He has eight total games played in four seasons, right, with six starts. He has just been bit by the injury bug after play after play after play, season after season after season. He he is just cannot stay healthy, cannot stay on the field, hasn't gotten a fair shake. So what I think Jerry Jones has in the back of his head is that Mike McCarty is a very good quarterback coach. You can call him the quarterback whisperer maybe, right? Putting words in people's mouths there, but definitely very, very good. So I, what I'm thinking is Jerry Jones is doing here is he is going to have a quarterback like Trey Lance on the roster because he was a number three overall pick just a couple years ago. He got him for a fourth round pick. So let's say Trey Lance comes in next preseason, talking about 2024, and he has an excellent preseason. I'm talking like looking like a number three overall pick. That gives Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and the Dallas Cowboys ammunition to move him on to a team that is needing a quarterback. I mean, obviously, if Cooper Rush and Will Gear shit, shit the bet at some point, hey, we got our QB too. But if somebody comes along and offers us a third-round pick, a second-round pick, we are making them out about steel balance. Uh, we're coming out on top on this trade. So do I think Dak Prescott will lose his job to Trey Lance? No. No way. I don't think that is going to happen anytime soon unless, you know, a Tony Romo thing happens, right? Meaning inj- season-ending injury, yada, yada, yada. I just, I don't, I don't see that happening. But this trade opportunity for the Dallas Cowboys has got much more interesting because when a quarterback like Trey Lance, third overall pick, couple years ago, performs well in preseason. The Vikings come calling again. The Miami Dolphins come crawling again. The Seattle Seahawks come crawling again. Trey Lance will not be a Dallas Cowboy past 2024 for sure. 2023, eh, to be determined. We will see what happens here moving forward. Speaking of moving forward here, Shaquan Barkley. Shaquan Barkley has come out in the news again saying that he wants to be a New York Giant for life. He has re-said that several times during the contract negotiations, during you know pre-contract negotiations. He, he basically said he loves him some New York football Giants. So as you guys know, Shaquan Barkley did sign a one-year contract worth about $11 million with the New York football Giants. So with that being said, we have to ask the question, way or no way did Shaquan Barkley hurt himself for contract negotiations moving beyond the 2023 NFL season? So guys, when we think about life and balance and wants and not wants and necessities and non-necessities and all this other stuff, what do people want the most? People want the most what they cannot have. Like, I break up with the girl because I don't want her anymore. She doesn't want me. Whatever. That person moves on to somebody else. They're dating somebody. They're talking to somebody. All of a sudden, the person that you once had that you didn't find attractive anymore, all of a sudden, like, man, she does look pretty good. Got that nice little booty on her, whatever, right? The New York football giants, they know that Shaquan Barkley wants them. They know that Shaquan Barkley wants to stay in New York and wants to be their guy for a long, long time. So that gives the New York football giants the ability to look around. It gives the New York giants the ability to say, hey, this Cream Hunt guy, he looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and talk to him over here a little bit 
because we know we got Shaquan still. Shaquan's right there in our back pocket, right there on the back burner, because we know that he he wants us. But if Kareem Hunt can come in and six million dollars, you know, we got a little Leonard Fournette over here still. We got a rookie that is over there that would, you know, we can sign in the second round for four years. Guys, Shaquan Barkley definitely hurt himself in contract negotiations moving forward. Because everything that I just said, Shaquan Barkley messed up. The Giants know that they can play hardball now. The Giants know that Shaquan Barkley doesn't want to go anywhere else. The Giants know that they can shop around, they can whore around, they can cheat on Shaquan Barkley, and he'll still be there wanting some action. So, yes, way. Shaquan Barkley hurt himself in contract negotiations moving forward by saying what he said. By him being honest and truthful and, I guess, loyal to a franchise, hurt himself in the end. Because when we look at it, the running back market is crap anyways, right? Yes, we do got a couple outliers there that boost up the market, boost up the numbers a little bit, but from seven down, they're only making like nine, eight, seven million dollars. Shaquan Barkley better figure himself out. He better recant his statement somehow, some way, if he wants a long-term deal with the New York football giants. If he truly wants to be a New York giant for life, he better recant his statement somehow, some way, and figure himself out and stop with this crap. Shaquan, I, I know you're probably not listening, but if you happen to see it in the clip somewhere or whatever, right, stop saying that you want to be a New York giant for life play hard to get why do you think women fall for guys that play that are like douchebag because they play hard to get play hard to get the giants will fall in love with you bada bing bada boom man it is a win win situation we are split 50 50 here in the poll guys be sure to get your votes in here because uh i see i see i see everything we see everything comment share guys Love the live stream if you guys are enjoying it. Please comment down below. But speaking of love, the New York, or sorry, the New Orleans Saints have loved Jimmy Graham for a long, long time. Jimmy Graham blew up as a New Orleans Saint. 2013 was a very magical year for them and the boys, right? Then... Jimmy Graham went on to the Packers and didn't play last season, but now he is back in New Orleans. Last night in the final preseason game of the NFL 2023 season, Jimmy Graham flexed on some second and third stringers. Jimmy Graham did some work last night in that game. Granted, it was against second and third stringers, but when we look at it, Jimmy Graham... Still got a little pep in his step. Still got that fire in his soul. Still got a little bit of this and a little bit of that, right? So, guys, way or no way, Jimmy Graham is the X factor for the New Orleans Saints moving forward in 2023. The Saints have brought in Derek Carr. Derek Carr has always kind of had that reliable tight end. It's Darren Waller, right? Kind of had a number one receiver, I guess, last season in Devontae Adams, but previous year, let's just be honest, has he ever had that number one receiver? Probably not. Guys, the New Orleans Saints might be one of the most slept-on teams in the NFL. The New Orleans Saints might be that team about week 13, week 14, when they're sitting like 9-3, and three, we're like, whoa, where did this come from? Where have these guys been all season long? And they're just going to be quietly doing their thing, right? Alvin Kamara is going to get a buck 20 on the ground. Uh, Michael Thomas is going to get his catches right. Uh, and then Jimmy Graham is going to be that X-factor guy. Jimmy Graham is going to be that tight end that is there in a crunch game after game after game. So, yes, way Jimmy Graham will be the X-factor for the New Orleans Saints this season. The New Orleans Saints will go as far as Jimmy Graham takes them in 2023. Now, he is not going to be the 2013 Jimmy Graham. He's not going to be the 2012 Jimmy Graham, 2014 Jimmy Graham. No, I'm not saying that. But 
He will be a great tight end in the crunch. When the pocket breaks down and Derek Carr rolls to his right and he doesn't see Michael Thomas, he doesn't see Alvin Kamara, Jimmy Graham is going to find an open spot on the field and sit there. He is going to get five to seven yards, get a big first down. It is going to be a great thing. Jimmy Graham is the X factor for the New Orleans Saints moving forward. Jimmy Graham will take the Saints as far as he wants them to go. Jimmy Graham is the X factor for the New Orleans Saints. And if you guys think otherwise, tell me who you think the X factor could possibly be in New Orleans. Because it's going to be Derek Carr needs a tight end. Derek Carr needs that good tight end. Is Taysom Hill it? I don't know. Jimmy Graham it? I think so. What other tight ends do they have in uh, New Orleans? Let me bring up the depth chart here. Tight ends. Juan Johnson. I guess. Jimmy Graham is listed as fourth. But listen, he will be the X factor. Jimmy Graham is the X factor. As you guys say no in the chat, whatever. It is what it is. It is what it is. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Guys, each year, there is a surprise team. There's a surprise game in the NFL preseason. And it makes us get excited. It makes us want to like, hey, look at this team. And that team right now is the Denver freaking Broncos. So as we jump into stock up or stock down, in the final game of the NFL preseason here, week three, the Denver Broncos flexed. I'm talking like flex. Show me those guns on the LA Rams with a beat down of 41 to zero. Granted, very little starters played in that game. I don't think any starters played on, on, on like either side. Didn't see any Russell Wilson. Didn't see Matthew Stafford. Didn't see any Cooper Cuff. No Jerry Judy. No Sutton. But this has the Denver Broncos fans up in arms saying, yeah, we told you. We told you Sean Payton was our guy. We showed, we told you our offense is coming. We told you that our defense is going to make some noise. Let's go, baby. So stock up or stock down for the Denver Broncos after the beatdown of the LA Rams. Guys, I am still not buying anything that the Denver Broncos are putting out. I am still not buying anything about Sean Payton. Now, I did say August 10th, August 12th, that I do understand the hype around the Denver Broncos. I do understand the hype around Sean Payton. I do understand that the Denver Broncos couldn't make some leaps and bounds and steps on the offensive side of the ball. But right now, I think the stock is still down for the Denver Broncos. I'm not buying anything that they're selling right now. I don't care if they won 41-0 over the LA Rams. I don't care if they went 1-3 in the in, in the uh, uh, pre preseason. I don't care. I want to see this week one, week two, week three, week four. After week four of the NFL season... If they're three and one at that point, two and two even, I, I might be singing a different tune. But right now, guys, the Denver Broncos, if you are jumping on that bandwagon, jump off. I I will give you guys all a free pass right now. Jump off that bandwagon. Don't look back because the Denver Broncos are just not going to be that good. The Denver Broncos are going to be the worst team in the NFC West. The Denver Broncos are going to be a top five pick overall this season. They're just they're they're just not that good. And with all the injuries that are happening, like come on. Now, even if they are leaps and bounds better than last season, they still have a pretty tough schedule. They do play the Dolphins. They play they play in a Bears an approved Bears team, the, the an approved Jets team, the Chiefs twice, the Packers, the Bills, the Vikings, the Browns, the Lions. They do not have an easy schedule. They just don't. So even if they are, leaves and bounds better, their schedule's not going to reflect it. I am selling everything that the Broncos are trying to sell me. 
I am passing. I am looking on the other aisle. I am looking at the Chargers. I'm looking at the Raiders. I'm looking everything but the orange and blue. It is what it is. But, guys, that is going to be it for today's show. Stock of the Denver Broncos are gone. Get that out of here, guys. We'll be here tomorrow, 10 a.m. East Coast time. There's going to be a lot of news happening on the NFL side of things, guys. And then Tuesday night, 10 p.m. East Coast time, after our show is back with my my man, myself, and Hoffy. Me, myself, my man, Hoffy. Me and Hoffy. There you go. Words got a little mixed up there. We'll see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m. East Coast time. Live, raw, uncut NFL talk. See you tomorrow.